Welcome to rigorous training in longitudinal data science, Radiance. Welcome to this Radiance presentation on longitudinal data structure. This session covers the following. What are longitudinal data? The structure of longitudinal data? And why is the structure of longitudinal data important? Longitudinal data are increasingly popular in the health and social sciences, as they can help us answer fundamental questions. A good definition of longitudinal data is data where we have repeated measures from the same units. The units, or elements, can be of different types, for example, individuals, households, hospitals, as well as devices such as sensors used to collect air quality. We must emphasize that the main characteristic of this type of data is the fact that information is collected repeatedly from the same unit. There are a number of examples in the health and social sciences of longitudinal data. One of the most popular types of data used in these fields comes from longitudinal surveys. In these surveys, the same individuals are interviewed multiple times to get information about their characteristics, such as mental and physical health, values, attitudes, biological data, and contextual information. Another type of longitudinal data is administrative records. These are records that are collected as part of regular activities performed by institutions such as hospitals, businesses, and government. They are usually longitudinal because they gather data on individuals at multiple points in time. For example, local government might have records of where you lived over time and hence know when you have moved house. These types of data are increasingly used by scientists to answer research and policy questions. Yet another example of longitudinal data are data collected from social media. These are collected during the user's interaction with a platform, such as Facebook. Again, this type of data is often longitudinal in nature, as the different actions by the users, such as logging in and interacting with others, are recorded over a long period of time. Finally, sensor data are popular in health sciences. These data are collected, for example, by the accelerometer in a mobile device, from GPS in a fitness tracker, and from air quality monitors. These typically collect longitudinal data with high frequency, for example every second, and can be used to understand users' behaviours and health outcomes. Longitudinal data also have a special structure which makes them different. This structure has a number of different names, nested data, multi-level data, hierarchical data, or clustered data. All of these terms refer to the fact that observations in longitudinal data are not independent. That means that the values collected at one point in time are related or correlated to other information collected at previous and future points in time on the same individual. In general, the correlation between observations from the same units is larger than that observed from two random units in the sample. That is why this type of data is called nested or clustered. Furthermore, values that have been collected closer together in time are usually more correlated than values collected further apart in time. Let's see a visual depiction of a typical longitudinal data set. Data points are structured in levels. At the first level, observations are defined by the time they are observed. This could be measured in, for example, seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, years, age, assessments, and so on. At the second level, we have the units, such as individuals, hospitals, households, devices, etc., which are the ones that are being observed at different times. You can see here that the repeated observations of the same unit at different times are nested. In this example, we have 100 units, and the maximum number of observations per unit is 6, meaning that information from each unit could be collected up to 6 times. For example, case 1 had information at all 6 times. Unit 2 
only at time 1 and time 2, unit 3 at time 1, 2, 4 and 5, and so on up to unit 100, which had information collected at time 1, 5 and 6. With 100 units and a maximum of 6 observations, the dataset could have contained up to 600 assessments in total. However, the actual data included a smaller number of observations because not all units were observed at each assessment occasion. Real data are very complex, and their structure can look like the one for this cohort study of 200 children who were interviewed on five assessment occasions. This table shows data for five units. These include information on age, birth weight, gender, and weight collected on each assessment occasion. We can see that not every child has complete information at all assessments. Therefore, for these five children, or units, we have a total of 16 assessments out of the potential 25. This example also illustrates how longitudinal data usually include two main types of information, time constant and time varying information. Time constant information does not change over time within a unit. So in this example, birth weight is the same at each occasion. On the other hand, Time varying information can change in time, such as weight in this example. When plotting the weight of children over time, in this case age, and by gender, we can see that some children gain more weight over time more than others. This demonstrates the advantage of collecting longitudinal data. By tracking the units over time, we can study individual time varying characteristics. Why is it important to know that longitudinal data are characterized by non-independent observations within the same unit? The main reason why we should care about this feature is that we should recognize that the total amount of available information is less than the information we would have gathered had all observations been independent. If we did not recognize this, we would draw wrong statistical inferences. Therefore, because of this nested data structure, we need to use analytical approaches that recognize such dependencies. For example, growth curve models and generalized estimating equations that do not rely on the assumption of independent observations. Such methods allow us to exploit the information from longitudinal data to answer questions about within unit, that is individual level, changes over time, for example, trajectories in mental health. In summary, in this short introduction to longitudinal data, we have described what longitudinal data are, they collect information on the same units on more than one occasion, that longitudinal data can be complex and have a very special structure referred to as nested or clustered, we have also stressed that data collected on the same units over time are not independent and that this needs to be accounted for when conducting statistical inferences. If you found this useful, you can look at our other modules and courses such as longitudinal data preparation. Thank you for watching. For more information, visit our website www.radiance.org.uk.